why is it that I always decide to try to lose weight around the holidays? I do it every year. Well, are you successful? <laughs> what do you think? Hello again, I'm Mark Huffman in the United States. And I'm Laura McKeeva in the United Kingdom, and this is RX411, your prescription for health. With science-based health news and information from both sides of the Atlantic, direct from rx411.com. And Laura, I guess most people aren't like me. They, they don't go on diets during the holidays when you have all that tempting food and pastries sitting around. Probably not. But we know that lots of people are concerned about their weight and try all sorts of things to shed some pounds. But most probably wait until after the holidays. Um, although it's always a good idea to show some restraint when you're celebrating. I'm just wondering, uh, is there any research out there that shows the best way to lose weight? I, I've read recently where some people go on fasts regularly and, and other people just try to watch their calories. Do we know which is better? So more recently, there's been a lot of evidence to show that fasting is very useful for losing weight, but probably not in the way that a lot of people think. So um, until the last few years when diets such as the 5-2 diet, which is known as an intermittent fasting diet, came out, Fasting was seen as a terrible idea because, yes, you will lose weight initially, but eventually your body adapts and says, hold on, I don't like this. I want you to cut even more calories out. And that's not sustainable. Um, with intermittent fasting, and there's a lot of research to back up its use, you'll say, like the 5-2 diet, eat a normal healthy diet for five days, fast on sort of 500 or fewer calories for two days um, and continue in the same vein. Um, there was a systematic review done of 40 or so studies um, looking at different types of intermittent fasting. And you can stand to lose between, I think it's between eight and 11 pounds over a 10 week period. Um, that doesn't sound like a lot, given that that's what normal calorie counting will achieve. However, um, in people who are in the early stages of type 2 diabetes, taking the fasting approach can reverse their type 2 diabetes, which is, you know, double bonus, you lose weight, you reverse, um, you know, really harmful metabolic condition. Um, so I'd say in terms of which is better, it depends on your personal preference. Um, and also the state that you're in right now. And how much willpower you have, I guess, because it's it's hard to go without <laughs> eating. <laughs> Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I think also if you're going to do two days of fasting and then you're going to go and binge for the day after, probably not a good idea. Uh, metabolism probably has something to do with um, whether you gain weight or lose it. Uh, and I've read all kinds of articles about how to uh, regulate your metabolism. Is, is there any way... Well, first of all, is it possible to regulate your metabolism? And is there any safe way to do that? Yeah, definitely. There, um, There's a lot of myths and facts out there about this sort of thing. So some of the safe for methods that will work include choosing your exercise carefully. So um, high intensity interval training, which I'll now refer to as HIT, because if you try and say those four words too fast, it doesn't go too well, um, involves sort of doing, you know, very fast paced bursts of um, heavy aerobic exercise, sometimes includes weights with very brief periods of recovery. And then you go on like that for about half an hour. Um, you'll probably burn as many calories as you would do swimming. Um, but the bonus is you will see your metabolism continue firing up throughout the day because of the way you've, you know, exercised. So that's safe and accessible for most people. But I think if you say had a joint replacement or if you do have funny joints or arthritis, maybe check that one out with a doctor first. Um, also uh, on the whole exercise thing, um, building muscles. So a lot of people prefer weight training um, over cardiovascular exercise because it's it's just, it doesn't feel quite so horrendous. And when you build muscle, you boost your base met metabolic rate. So your base metabolic rate is the rate at which you burn calories while you're sedentary. And the more muscle you have, um, the higher that goes. You don't need to become a bodybuilder or anything. Just try and, you know, replace some of that fat with muscle. And then finally, one that's quite easy for most people, um, switch some of your cold beverages from, say, alcohol, soda or juice to water. 
you'll cut out a load of calories but also um, every time you drink cold water so not just normal water cold water um, you're bringing your core temperature down and your metabolism will fire up as you try to bring the temperature back up um some of the myths out there about um you know boosting your metabolism there's little to no evidence for eating a lot more spicy foods if you have a condition such as gourd um or you know you're primed for a peptic ulcer it's probably a good idea that you don't start eating chilies um and also green tea is no more effective than caffeine in terms of metabolism boosting so just a couple of things that you may not want to do because they're not entirely necessary well, I like the idea of um, maybe building muscle mass so I can burn calories while I'm sitting on the couch. That, that seems to suit my uh, <laughs> uh, exercise regimen. Okay, well, just as soon as the holidays are over, we're going to see all kinds of advertisements for weight loss products and systems. And some of these have been around a long time and some may be fairly new. There's the Atkins diet. Uh, There's a lot of talk about the Mediterranean diet. And then there's commercial programs like uh, Weight Watchers and Nutrisystem. From From a health standpoint, how do you go about evaluating a weight loss program and, and should a doctor be involved? Um, so in terms of evaluating a weight loss program, I would say the first thing you need to do is watch out for any ridiculous gimmicky claims. So claims such as you can lose 10 pounds in three days, um, that 10 pounds will not be 10 pounds of fat. I can almost guarantee it. Um, And the next thing is how well does this weight loss program fit in with your lifestyle? So I think one of the older diets that was quite um, faddy, for want of a better word, was the cabbage soup diet. Um, modern versions could include the Atkins diet or the paleo diet simply because, you know, most people don't have enough time to sort of make the foods involved. It can become very expensive. You can alienate yourself socially unless all of your friends are paleo which is great um and also speaking as a parent i don't think you could really force your children to be paleo either (laughs) nor should you um so once you know that a diet does fit in with your lifestyle maybe uh take a little look at whether it's feasible budget wise so programs such as weight loss um you know in the mediterranean diet usually will suit most people's budgets Um, And then maybe look at the other things that are involved with the diet. So Weight Watchers, I love. I think it's great, but I know it wouldn't be great for me because I don't want to go to a group. Um, I don't want to count things according to points. Um, Whereas somebody who's, you know, less willing to be restricted, somebody similar to myself, might prefer the Mediterranean diet because they've got a lot more latitude when it comes to what they do do make in the kitchen and they don't have to count according to points as for you know um speaking to your doctor definitely absolutely if you're pregnant breastfeeding pre-existing health condition or taking certain medications especially medications such as warfarin and insulin that can easily be altered by what you eat Um, And also try to remember to go for something that's not too regimented. So if it's a diet, one that I used to read about a lot was called the Ultimate New York Body Plan. And it left absolutely no room for taking a break over the festive period and other religious holidays or your birthday or vacations. Um, You know, go for a diet where you can take a break from it without falling off the wagon or, you know, where you're not going to get lambasted because you want a few days to eat cakes or whatever. Well, I like cake. Uh, So maybe (laughs) so maybe now during the holidays uh, is not the ideal time to start a diet. I wouldn't say so. No, but try to keep everything under control. (laughs) good advice. And this reminder for all the latest science-based health news and information, your one-stop source is your prescription for health, rx411.com. That'll do it for us. Until next time, I'm Mark Huffman. And I'm Laura McKeever reminding you to get sound medical advice before starting any diet and make it your New Year's resolution to stick to it. And Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and Happy New Year for everyone. So long.